So welcome to the Music City Drive-In. I'm Eric Langford, and I have the opportunity today to speak with Jennifer Weir, the one of the stars of uh, Finding Her Beat, which was co-directed, I believe, by Miss Dawn Mickelson and Carrie Pickett. How are you all doing today? Fabulous. Wonderful. Great. So happy to be here. Excellent. I feel very lucky to get to be here. So I'm going to jump right into the questions I have. Uh, can you all give sort of a summary for us of how I'm really curious about how you all found and decided to tell this story and what this story is. <laughs> well, um, we this story started with Don and I over lunch. Um, so I was producing the concert and, and I was, you know, trying to pull in all these big ideas. And I said, well, this is going to be such a huge happening. We need to film it. And I was thinking concert DVD kind of film, you know, and then the more we talked about it and the more we talked about sort of our synergies in life and our, our <laughs> roles of, of women and mothers trying to like break through our industries. So there, there's just so much. She's like, this, this is a film and I know just how I'm going to film it. And so then she brought in Carrie and it kind of just took on a life from, of its own from there. Um, and what was so great about it is that through both Dawn and Carrie's vision, then this project just became something even more and told a larger story, a deeper story, and sort of even transcended the moment on stage. So that was such a gift for me. Um, Dawn, do you want to share? You're so good at this, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it was lunch. I mean, Jen and I have known each other for over 20 years. And so, you know, you have lunch with people you like. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're making a film together, which was awesome because, you know, being able to collaborate across disciplines was also really cool to be able to like, you know, she's a performing artist. And when do I get to work with performing artists? So anyway, it's it's just been an amazing experience from the beginning. And I will also say that, you know, talking about what the film is about, it's about women claiming their place as center stage. And, you know, Jen does this beautifully, the women of her beat do this beautifully. And the film itself um, was made predominantly by women and non-binary -bin creators. And so, you know, from in front of the screen and behind the screen, this film does just that. So <clears throat> this takes a, a lot of confidence like i i imagine starting something as new as this as herbie and deciding to film it and not knowing what how it was going to go on stage that monumental performance at the end i mean there is a moment in the movie where uh Ms. jennifer your your wife asks you are you going to regret any of this and you say like no i'm never going to regret any of this like did that hold true for you? Are you all excited about the product you have and, and how everything worked out? Um, I would say absolutely. Like it just was way bigger than any one of us. And it just took this whole family of, of like visionary divas, you know, like each a leader in their own right coming together to try and, you know, bump on bump into each other and figure our way into this ensemble and this family and then Carrie did the same thing behind the camera um weaving together like all the different voices behind the camera and being so embedded you know with the performers like she ate and slept and got sick with them too and um it sort of expanded sort of our whole world. But I, I would say that it is definitely not something I would ever regret. I feel like if I die tomorrow, I will have done this. Um, so it feels like a really, you know, huge thing. But at any point given like in the entire process from the beginning of the concept of the concert to the final sort of end, ending bits of post-production is this question of like, um, you just have to have utter faith and keep moving forward because you just have no idea where the journey is going to take you. Carrie, you want to speak about well, that's experience? That's basically um, how I always like to start. And that is that I see a, starting a documentary feature like buying a really expensive one-way ticket to an unknown destination. And, you know, once you step on, you feel like there's definitely a story here and I have um, the access and the, and the 
participation of the people, but that you don't really know what that means for each person. And here we had a cross-cultural situation where, you know, I did a lot of the filming in Japan without really understanding the language or what was being filmed. And then even in America on the really more intimate moments, you know, a lot of times I would just have to go with my journalistic intuition and my women's intuition and just keep rolling because I knew something was happening. You can see it on people's faces. Even if you were to cut the sound, you could, you know, kind of get a sense of what people are feeling with their body language and the context of the scene. But um, I think that the access and the intimacy that we got with this film is really unprecedented in a cross-cultural um, setting like this, where Japanese people are typically holding their things too close to their chest. And, you know, the Americans are are like, <laughs> wow, <"Wah>, me! <laughs> me! Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so... Um, I I wanted to ask, how do you find that balance? Because this is this feels just as much a the personal journey of Jennifer's family as it does like an a, a, a gateway to understanding taiko drumming and and the importance of that culturally and the importance of this moment culturally. How do you balance something so small scale and so large scale? Well, that's the documentary film journey, right? Mm. I mean, that's the filmmaker's desire is to make their one journey be a bigger universal theme that hits people who don't care about Tycho, never heard about Tycho, and they understand that really, basically, the film isn't about Tycho, but it's about people following their dreams and giving themselves the empowerment to make it happen. Yeah, and I just think, too, like, just, you know, um, because Don and I know each other so well, then I think, like, the, the things that we both struggle with in terms of balancing acts as women in the arts, you know, um, is is something that she uh, could really pick into and in terms of, like, the storytelling and the, um, the editing that both she and Carrie did. I mean, they edited hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And that's the thing about the cinema verite style. I had no idea that this is like the hardest way to film <laughs> in that you you really tr truly do have to let the, the story emerge from all the footage. And I think that's what um, Don and Carrie did such a beautiful job of. Um, I, you know, truly like I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that they were there and they were filming and something was going to happen at the end of this. Um, but what a gift, you know, because as a performing arts person, you, you know, everything you do is so visceral, uh, uh, visceral and ephemeral, like it's gone in that moment, you feel it and then it's gone. Um, and to have something captured, you know, like these moments captured, like things that I forgot even happened. Um, seeing that, seeing that picture of my family, a moment in time when my daughter was like exactly that age was um, just, it was incredible. Oh, that's right. She'd be at least two years older by now. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, so what ultimately are, are you hoping that audiences are, are going to take away from telling this story? And what advice would you have for any girls or women who are inspired to make their voice heard in their own field? So much. Don? Don, you go first. Oh no, I feel like Jen is such a great motivational speaker. Oh. I mean, <laughs> but uh, I will say that, yeah, I hope, I hope that girls come away from this film <clears throat> wanting to you know bring their own chair sit at the table make their own table you know like one of the things that was so inspiring to me about her beat was that these women have been cast not cast aside but not allowed in for so long and they eventually said you know what we're just going to do our own concert ah <laughs> and and they did it and it was phenomenal and it drew in people from all over the country if not all all over the world in the middle of the winter in Minnesota, not just the performers, but the uh, people on stage and, or I'm sorry, the, not just the performers, but the audience, you know, you had audience members flying in to a 
February in Minnesota. And which I'm happened. so sorry, but credit to you all for the shots of the audience that you included. They're <laughs> great selections. I'm just, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. No, but I, I think that it's, that's the, the lesson here is that, you know, if you're not invited, that's okay. Throw your own party. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, you know, and selfishly for me too, like having the, the, the screen filled with these amazing women that my daughter can look up to and see like this whole range of ages, of styles, of, of philosophies, of like people finding power in their own terms, you know, and it doesn't look the same way for each person. And, um, and honestly, for me, just being an Asian American woman, like I love seeing the screen filled with like faces that I can see myself reflected in and that it's not about our trauma or our tragedy or, you know, the worst things in the world happening to us, but it's about us celebrating and claiming our space. Like to me, that is, it's a simple thing, but it's revolutionary just for me on a personal level. And, and then I think the thing that was happening on in front of the camera was also happening behind the camera because Dawn and I have always directed our own films and we've never co-directed before. And um, I've never had a dedicated second camera person with me for an entire project like this before ever. And so, you know, to have um, Shiho Fukada in, in Japan and Carolyn Mariko Stucky in, in America was um, just such a gift. And we all grew from one another. And so I think that same empowerment happened behind the camera as well. So there's like leaps of faith and trust happening wildly all over the place with this, like filmmaker to filmmaker to subject to performer in Japan to performer everywhere all over the place. Everybody's just like, ah, oh, we'll make it work. And, and you did. This is it's that's incredible. Um, so when and where will people be able to see this? Uh, it will be premiering this weekend at the Mill Valley Film Festival, world premiere. Very exciting. Um, and then it's going to be, you know, we've got uh, over a dozen film festivals in the next two months. So it'll be across the United States. We're going uh, to just Arkansas. The yeah. We're going to Hot Arkansas, Hot New Springs, York. Arkansas is next. Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival. Hawaii, mm -hmm. Seattle, Indianapolis. Minneapolis. New York. New York, Wilmington, North Carolina. Austin. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> but and again, oh, this so is just happy. the beginning. Yeah, for sure. And and so, okay, is it also just the beginning for her beat? It ends with a performance in Japan. <laughs> what ultimately is the goal here? Great what question. The goal is to have an international tour. The goal is to have a open-ended off-Broadway run where women can like have have a career track can make can make a, a profession of, uh, for themselves and um that we can like bring up the next generation of, of artists that that oh, would be an awesome goal i'm putting it out there we could oh. be the um women's version of stomp that's right <laughs> a multicultural oh, world-spanning version of stomp i've exactly. been there for it every time it came in my area for sure. <laughs> um, so all right well i i i'm so sorry to not have more time to talk but i just want to thank you guys so much for your time today and for the chance to get to watch this please everybody watching this find a way to watch finding her beat legally and like, <laughs> just please support these filmmakers this this was fantastic it's emotional it conveys strength and beauty and endurance and warmth even though it's freezing in the winter and everyone got sick so <laughs> just thank you all for your time oh thank, thank you, you so much this is wonderful <laughs>